Good morning, afternoon, or evening. We are back for part seven of our Risk of Rain, Risk of Flame uh, tutorial series that was inspired by Risk of Rain. And let's get started. So what we're gonna do, uh, first of all, there's a couple things we need to fix because I'm pretty sure our, our shooting animation Okay, so if you look at our player, we've, we're using the player mask, right? But we forgot to use the player mask in our shooting animation. So that's not a good thing. So switch that to use the player mask, and I think that will fix some of the glitches because you guys bumped into a couple glitches shooting next to the, next to the edges. So uh, we want to fix that glitch there um, so that you can't... You can't uh, yeah, I think what was happening is you guys were getting next to the edge, shooting right here, and then the character was catching on the edge, and it was messing stuff up. So let's, uh, we fixed that already. <laughs> That's the easy way to fix it. Just make sure that your three shot has the same mask as the player, the sprite player mask. And then there was one more thing where we were jumping around because we're hitting the edges. And the reason is because we've got set this to negative one, which is basically an infinite distance, but we want to set it to the max uh, vertical speed that we've set. So we've set a vertical speed, if you'll notice, inside of our step event, we, uh, we have a vertical speed of maximum of 10. So uh, we can set this right here, this max distance to 10 and that should fix that as well. So let's make sure that that works. And it's really awesome to see you guys, you know, looking for these glitches and we can kind of find them together. Whenever you're developing a game, there's always gonna be small glitches. Uh, there's usually ways to fix them and uh, it usually, you know, it usually doesn't take too long to try and fix them, so. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I can't seem to hit that corner to reproduce the glitch, but it looks pretty good, so. Okay, so let's make our enemies move now so that, you know, we're actually kind of scared of them. So what I'm going to do, let me think for just a second. I think what I want to do for this artificial intelligence, I want the enemy to you know, move towards the player and uh, but I'm trying to decide I think I'm going to do it like Risk of Rain because in Risk of Rain when an enemy moves towards an edge it actually doesn't go off the edge, right? It just kind of stops. It's like I'm trying to get to the player but there's an edge here so I actually can't get to the player and so the enemies have a couple different states actually in Risk of Rain. They have like a wandering state where they wander around and then they have another state which is where they're kind of chasing you. For now we're going to make these enemies always chasing the player but they they can't go off edges for now. So let's come in here. Now the way that we can check where the player is First, we want to check if the player exists. So if instance exists. The reason you always check if the object exists before you actually try and find it is because if it doesn't exist and you try and find it, then <clears throat> the game's going to freak out at you and give you an error. So object player. So if the player exists. Now we're going to do another if condition, which is if x is less than um, object player dot x. Do something else. Do something else. And all of this, we're going to put all of this into one giant if statement as well. If distance to point object player dot x object player dot y is greater than or equal to 8 
That way they don't just move inside of us. They'll kind of stop before they reach us. Let's uh, tab this over. So what this what this does, we check to see if the player exists. Okay, if the player does exist, then we check to make sure that we're, you know, further than eight pixels away from it, uh, because we don't we don't want to move towards the player if we're already you know right next to him. So this says if you're you know pretty far away from the player, and then this one says if the player's x or if our x position is less than the player's x position. So. If our x position is less than the player's x position, then we are on the left side of the player, right? So we want to move which direction? To the right. So we're going to do if place free x plus uh, 2 y. x plus equals 2. Awesome. So, you know, if we're to the left of the player and the space next to us, two pixels next to us is free, then move over there. Else, so what does else mean? Else means if we're to the right of the player, because we're not to the left, and the place free minus 2, then move two pixels to the left. And this one, actually, I lied because this one will actually fall off of the, it will actually fall off of ledges. So it's not a very complicated artificial intelligence right now. You can see it just moves to us. And those two move inside of each other. And then they all become one giant mass because they actually all move inside of each other. So we don't really want them to move inside of each other. So let's see if we can stop that. So one way to do it is we can put an and statement in here. And not place meeting x plus 2 y object enemy flame. <laughs> I'm glad that's what I named it because I couldn't remember exactly what it was named. And then we're going to end with our last parenthesis. So we're just going to make sure that, you know, there's not any solid objects to the right of us, but we're also going to make sure that there's not an enemy there so that we don't move inside of our, inside of other enemies. In Risk of Rain, they actually just move inside of each other, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> They've just done it in a way where it doesn't look too bad because they kind of push each other a little bit. But this will just keep our you'll notice it should stop right when it gets there. Um, but see that causes a problem because this one's not moving towards me. So they're all just kind of stuck there now. So we gotta fix that. It must be because I just copied that down and forgot to do minus two. <laughs> yep, should be subtract two. Okay, it's looking good. Yep, but they all get stuck right there, right? But they do, they'll all chase me. But you'll notice they're, they, they don't face the right direction, so we wanna fix that too, and make sure that they face the right direction. So let's come back in here, and we'll just set this image x scale equals one, image, x scale equals negative one. And I'm gonna quickly comment this, check for the player. Check the distance to the player. Check if we are to the left or the right of the player and then finally if we can move 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 towards the player that's what we do 
move towards the player. So the nice thing about this code is if the player dies, then our enemies won't move towards us, which is perfect because we don't want them to. You know, we're dead. We just want them to stop. Or maybe we want them to start pacing again, whichever. For now, this is how they're going to work. And so they'll kind of chase us. But we're quite a bit faster than them, so it's totally unfair. So one thing that Risk of Rain has, and we'll put this in the next tutorial, is Risk of Rain uh, has a stall animation. So if you hit an enemy, it will actually stall and stop moving. So we'll look into putting that in the next tutorial. But thank you guys for watching, and I appreciate you guys. This tutorial is getting rather complicated, so hopefully you can still follow along. Um, I'm gonna do some. I'm gonna make sure and think about how I'm going to do some of these things because what I'm going to set you guys up with essentially by the end of this tutorial is a game engine. So, you know, we'll only have one or two enemies or whatever in this actual tutorial series, but I'll have it set up so that you can just copy the enemy objects, change their images, change their health variables, and create a whole game from the engine that we build together. So that's kind of the idea with it, with where I'm going with it. So uh, I really appreciate you guys and all of your feedback and support and even your questions. I do my best to try and answer every comment. If there's a lot of comments. So if I miss your question, you can always shoot me an email. It's just heartbeast.studios at gmail.com. I don't miss my emails. So uh, uh, shoot me an email if I miss your question by accident. I do apologize. I don't think I've missed very many. At least nobody's yelled at me for it yet. So, <laughs> But I will talk to you guys later and you guys have a great day.